Hello, I am Sarah from Homespun Childhood, and today I am giving you an ultimate tour of our notebooking through the years and our collection of notebooks. These are just a few. I've got multiple stacks over next to me, and we're gonna dive into all of them. And I'm going to talk you through our process for notebooking and show you examples of what it looks like. So welcome for those of you who are new here. I am Sarah. I am a former teacher turned homeschool mom of three. My background is in early childhood development and literacy. Here at Homespun Childhood, I share all things homeschooling, reading instruction, curriculum planning, and more. If you are not already subscribed, go ahead and do that now and let's dive in. So first thing first, why notebooking? So I have always been a fan of personal knowledge management. In the um, planning nerd out world, there are lots of devices for that for adults. Um, you can look into Rome Research and Notion and Obsidian and all these different methods. Today though, we're gonna talk about not really managing our children's knowledge, but collecting it in notebooks. And Make It Stick by Peter Brown is a really great book about how the brain learns. And so this can, book, if you haven't already read it, can provide some really great information on how notebooking not only is a nice memory keeper and can be fun for some children, but can help us be a learning tool. Because we know that when we have effortful work, like writing and drawing and labeling a picture, it helps the brain retain the information longer. We also know that if we are kind of prompted to think back to old learning, that that work of having to retrieve that old knowledge back out actually makes that knowledge stick and move into our permanent memory better. So my children flip through their old notebooks all the time. And when they do, I'm taking that as a moment where I can say, oh, tell me more about, uh, well, this is a old, really old one. Tell me more about ways we can keep our home safe or about whales, <laughs> okay? Um, and that will jog their memory and then they'll be having to retrieve the information and it usually is effortful if it's been a long time and so then it helps it stick better too. Also, we know that all new learning needs something to attach itself to. And so that's where helping our children build background knowledge and having evidence of that previous learning is another way that we can help them with their new learning. Maybe we are learning about the Middle Ages in Europe, but you did a castle unit study a couple years ago. Well, you can pull out your drawings or your work on that and it can help jog their memory and you have something from the past to stick the new learning onto. All right, so enough about that. This book is great. I do have some slides and info on it over on Instagram if you want the like clip notes version. All right, back to the notebooks. I'm gonna show you where we are now and then we're gonna kind of go back to the beginning and walk through the evolution of notebooking for our family. Okay, so right now these are our special notebooks. For those of you who are wanting this kind of typed out, I am working on a notebooking guide and that will be available um, through my store and I will link that below. Right now, part of our weekly rhythm is the children, my older children, I think my we started around six, have a science book and a social studies book. And once a week, usually at the end of the week, I will ask them to document their learning through a picture or a diagram or something in these books. And so let's just kind of look through these. These are the visual series by Strathmore. I will link them below. I like these for our kind of fancy work uh, because they have a really nice hardcover. We have been using the same books for about three years now because we only use it once a week and sometimes we go like a month without doing it. So this is my son's and he started this journal in 2021. So it's 2023 and we're still using the same journal, okay? All right, so we're gonna just kind of flip through this and you can see examples. So here is when you're learning about the four spheres so in this particular example, he gridded this out and drew pictures of the four spheres and then I wrote on the whiteboard the names and he copied those down. Here is an example of the Earth's layers. He drew and labeled this. And over here, he has a piece of writing. This was either a piece of copy work or a published piece. We noticed the word, there's no spelling errors in here and that is in his handwriting. Typically, when we're doing this kind of work, one day will be 
the illustration or the painting, and the next day is the writing. If it's a published piece of writing, this is something that he would have been working on throughout the week, the rough draft and the brainstorm and all that, and then the final day, putting it in here. We have plate tectonics. Here is an example of some shared writing. So I took a big idea from our curriculum, left some of the words out, and he wrote in plates and moving. You notice we are using phonetic spelling here. That's okay. And then I wrote down for him what he said for the rest. And here is his drawing for that. Now, please know that my children have very strong fine motor skills, okay? What you're seeing in here is maybe what your child would draw and maybe not. That's totally okay. I'm going to show you examples of a four-year-old's journal in a minute. doesn't matter what their drawings look like, okay? Here is an example of my son did um, Olympus Mons, and then he narrated and I transcribed his writing. Here is another fill-in-the-blank type thing. Here's another fill in the blank with the rock cycle. And if I were to zoom in here, you can see there's a lot of erasing going on, okay? It's okay if these aren't perfect. That said, my kids know that we're not ripping pages out of here. And so if they get to a moment where it's too much or the idea they have in their brain is not the idea that's coming out on paper, we pause and we come back to it another time. I might suggest sketching it out on a piece of regular paper first and getting kind of the positioning so that then they can have an idea for how they wanna get it in the book. I might just draw it for them if it's one of those days, okay? But I have made it very clear since we've started this that these are our special learning journals and we're gonna put our best work in here. And if you need support to get there, that's great. I am happy to help you, but we're not gonna be ripping out pages. And there might be maybe one or two times over the years where we've just ripped a page out. But for the most part, I've tried to jump in and support them where I can before we get to the point that a page needs to get ripped out. You'll notice we have some places where we did the work and then we didn't finish it because that's life, okay? So this is not like perfect by any means. We have over here a shared writing thing. This was my son and I going back and forth with the pen. I know I wrote, actually no, I think he wrote all that. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard because his handwriting initially looked very similar to mine. Um, a Big Bang writing piece here. Solar system. You'll notice there's a mix of watercolors and color pencils in here. These are block crayons that I use um, with a ruler. Ooh, sorry, sorry. I use a wood ruler because the metal rulers uh, will actually dig into the block crayons, but I'll take a, a block crayon and just run it down and then move the ruler, line it up, run it down to do that. Uh, then we move into space here. Again, we have some filling in the blanks. We have a labeled diagram. And so each week I'm saying something like, we talked about spacecraft this week what would you like to draw in your learning journal for science and so in this case it would have been the saturn v rocket and then we did a little piece of writing related to that life in space here if they are stuck on an idea i will just tell them this week we're going to draw a rocket would you like a picture to look at it would you like an art hub kids video to watch while you do this would you like a light board to trace a picture Okay, you'll notice some of these are copy work. This was copy work. Some are fill in the blank. This right here is a piece of taped paper because I made a mistake and he didn't like how I had scratched it off and so we did that. Okay, going through space here. Zooming through space. Okay, we get up to some Animal Kingdom type work in the fall of 2022. Again, some of this is copy work. Some of this is independent work. Theory of evolution, filling in the blanks here. This particular picture, I remember we got really, really stuck on this primate down here. And we came back like three days later to work on it. So know that these don't always come out easily and there are ways we can support our kids. This is a chart he copied from a book, um, skyscraper stuff, penguins to scale, another 
partially finished page, but there it is. And then that's the end of the science book. We still have a few pages left in here. I'm going to show you science for my daughter that was happening concurrently. Now, some of this was when my daughter was about four or five. I'm trying to think how old was she? Five. Okay, and I wouldn't have necessarily been doing this with her if it weren't for the fact that she wanted to do the same thing that her older brother was doing. And so I was like, cool, yeah, you can do that too. And so, you know, what do you want to draw? What do you want to paint? So here's the earth, and we label the different spheres, the four layers of the earth. She's telling me what to write, and I'm writing it. Again, more drawing, and she is telling me what to write. Okay, so this is before she is able to be writing her own words. I am just writing down her words for her. This is when the child is literally just putting in their best work, okay? So here is right after the Big Bang. And this is the solar system. Here's the moon, Mercury. Okay, some of it's finished, some of it's not. That That's okay. Mars, moving through, let's get up to, where we are now, I don't know, a page that's upside down. Okay, this is real life. We were studying rabbits and hares, there were supposed to be writing here, it didn't happen. Uh, talking about mammals, these were oil pastels, I think, maybe penguin chicks, she got really into this one, had a very long narration that I transcribed, and that was the end of her science journal. Let's look at our learning journals for social studies, and then we're gonna kind of go back to the beginning. All right, so when we first started these, I think we were using History Quest, and I was pasting in the maps, and we were working on labeling them, so it doesn't always have to be something that's drawn in, it can be pasted in. Then we moved into Ancient Egypt. Um, here's a pyramid drawing over here, and we were using History Quest. This is a map from History Quest that we used a light board for. So I printed off the map from History Quest, put it on the light board. Oh buddy, I just ripped some of those pages. Oops. Taped it on the light board, taped this on the light board, and then my son traced that map. And then we did the, followed the directions for labeling it from History Quest. Here is for the Nazca people, and we did the copy work from History Quest over here ancient Greece. And again, some copy work, Trojan horse, um, a narration. I, my son narrated, I transcribed, he did the title. A Greek hoplite, labeling from a picture, some writing, triremes, some ancient Greece work, ancient Rome, a map, and then copy work. So each week we are doing one of these. So here's a Roman army and the legionary. Here is narration that I transcribed. So on one day, he would do the drawing, coloring it in and everything. And in this case, the writing came the next day because that drawing was a lot of fine motor work. And then he had done the writing and the labeling on, so usually this was a Thursday, Friday thing. So Thursday he drew and Friday he labeled. And since that was a lot of handwriting type work, I wasn't going to then ask him to do a lot of more handwriting type work. So he spoke and I wrote. So balancing out the amount of physical handwriting and fine motor work based on our child's stamina. Great okay, Roman Empire map aqueducts and then we have another aqueduct drawing some weeks we did two different things so like if we were doing a map we might have done the map on monday and then the copy work on tuesday and then a drawing of aqueducts on thursday and then the writing on friday here is an example of a kind of published piece of work i will show you the rough draft for this in the history notebook in just a minute some more map work Early China, some filling in the blank. Pretty sure we did a video for this one on YouTube. Uh, Terracotta Army. Here's his writing for this one. Map, oh, starting the Middle Ages. More map work. Some text features here to go along with the monastery he drew. Byzantine Empire. 
Islamic Empire. This one, we might have started this in a notebook or this might have been transcribed. Here's Vikings. This one we started in a notebook as post-its for a shared writing and then this was his final copy here. As he progressed through his typing skills, you'll see that he starts typing it. Here's some sentence expansion, because, but, so, so the stem, and then he was filling those in. Viking stereotypes transcribed here. Here's where he started typing things in um, and choosing whatever fonts he wanted. Harold the Unfortunate. Okay, feudal society. Castle building, so a list of the different types. So you can really use any type of writing that's in here. It doesn't have to be a consistent thing from week to week. The consistency that we see in my notebooks and that my notebooks my children are using is for the learning journals. It's like once a week, if once a week, right? If we might be doing just a science unit study, then we might not have social studies for a whole month or vice versa. And then usually we're having a illustration on one side, writing on the other side. On Hawking here, this one was another one that was getting really frustrating and we came back to like three or four days later. And then we still have more space in here. Okay, let me show you my daughters from the same time period and then we're going to kind of backtrack to the beginning and do the evolution. All right, so here's a map that she traced and then we never finished working with. Here is a page that was part of a beautiful feat, kind of around the world thing. Cut out the pictures, she colored them in, she traced a map of China. Then we started doing history stuff and she wanted to do more of that, so we transitioned over, transcribing here. She did a video um, to do this one and she painted it and then did, I think, liquid, I don't know what kind of watercolors. I think she did watercolor pencils for those and then um, a map and some animals from Africa, dressing like a Viking. This is an example of a shared writing thing, okay? So she's just starting learning how to read and write. So I wrote this, she wrote is a, we jointly wrote castle. She wrote in the, I wrote middle ages. She wrote the, I wrote king. She wrote and, I wrote queen. She wrote part of live, I wrote there. Okay, so kind of back and forth so that she can write the sounds she can hear. She told me how to label her castle drawing. Siege warfare. I actually wasn't going to have her do an illustration on this and then she saw her brothers and wanted to do it and holy cow, I'm just so impressed with like the work that she has done in here. Here is her picture about hawking. Gonna get to the writing on that one and that's the end of her social studies journal. All right, I'm gonna put those aside and we are going to dive back in time to how this all starts. This actually started in fall of 2019, so my son would have been five, a new five. So the very first page that we have in here is a picture of the apple orchard after a field trip. And so one of the things we started doing is when we were doing these different experiences together is I would save ticket stubs and maps and that kind of thing, and we would just document it. And so he drew, um, you know, the apple tree and labeled the different parts and then drew the different parts of the apple. He went to Plymouth Plantation. So here is his drawing. He wrote Fort and copied Plymouth Plantation and copied um, a Wee and Wampanoag home site and all of that. What was your, oh, so then we transitioned over here. This was the only notebook we had for him for two years. This is a Strathmore notebook that will be um, linked in my guide. We also included some book reviews. So we read Mouse and the Motorcycle. I read Mouse and the Motorcycle. He drew this picture and I said, what was your favorite part? And I wrote down what he, he said. We went to New Hampshire. So I collected a map and a sticker and we just kind of scrapbooked it that way. Red Zoe and Sassafras, he drew that, I wrote his words. We did an owl pellet dissection at a science center. So he drew a picture of that process and we pasted this in. Okay, this doesn't need to be like anything perfect, right? This is kind of just sloppy and throwing it all in, but I love these and so does he. He loves looking back at them. Went to the zoo, he drew the zoo, did some writing, another kind of book report, a review, Runaway Ralph. The Little House Treasury, we went to an elephant and piggy show, he traced this, 
and then wrote, should I share my ice cream? We went to the Nutcracker, cut up the brochure. We were learning about South America, pasted in a map, he colored, learning about the rainforest, read my father's dragon, he did that, no words, an aquarium. Okay, so you can see just all different stuff is in here. Here's some dinosaur work we did. Can't remember what this was from. Okay, learning about the life cycle of a butterfly. And even from this age, this was the notebook that was not necessarily within reach. This was something we were doing like together. I was sitting down next to him or I was making lunch and he was working on this. This is a map about um, bees and beehives and honey and bears. Five ways to be healthy. I think this is an Oak Meadow health lesson. Then we started a bird unit study. Uh, this was a first aid lesson from Oak Meadow. Growly summary, all about different beaks. Home safety. Still doing our bird study in here, mixed in with other things. That's totally fine. This was a watercolor we did, cut out and pasted in. Then we did a um, ocean study on whales. And moving into octopus, adaptations, map. This was a summary narration of another book in the Growly series I typed up. I'll often ask him to tell me what he remembers from a book and record it on my phone and then go and type it um, later. Okay, I uh, did a unit on money. So we have the bartering argument here. He drew this whole little comic, which I love. Spending, saving, sharing, needs and wants. Uh, this was, let's see, March wind and April showers bring forth May flowers, a little poem thing. Tale of Benjamin Buddy, Bunny, different types of trucks, frog life cycle, Claude Monet, just like everything is in here. A unicorn study that we did, mermaid study, hammerhead sharks, neat looking sharks, diver's kit, Eugene Clark, Eugene Clark, Eugene Clark, remember Eugene. Okay, that was his. We used this for two years with nothing else. My daughter started one similarly to that at about the same age. And again, it's, you know, a combination of her drawing and my writing, ticket stubs, elephant and piggy, nutcracker, stickers for the rainforest. My son did the diagram. She did the stickers. Okay, butterfly life cycle, labeling what she's drawing. Even if it's a picture where you can't necessarily identify it from looking at, this was her five ways to be healthy. I, I told her to tell me about her picture and I just wrote down the words. We have some examples of, you know, kids being kids. All the bees are on a trip. These are their little homes. Birdman, first aid, growly review. eggs, dolphin, okay, here's her whale with a water blow, like you can see she's showing the learning, and now like she looks back at these and she's like, wow, I have come a long way, and my four-year-old, I show him these when he's telling me he can't draw, and I'm like, yes, you can, and look, your brother and sister didn't draw the way they do now when they were your age, our drawing changes and grows over time. Claude Monet, the unicorn unit, cut out a picture coloring page and posted it in. Again, cutting things out. Mermaids, great sharks. A mummy coloring page when you're doing that. George Surratt, uh, cutting and pasting, dive kit pictures. So scaffolding it where necessary. She wasn't able to draw the pictures yet, but she was working on cutting skills. And so I had her cut out the pictures and this one didn't even get pasted in. I should do that, but my tape isn't in front of me. Okay. All right. So then once my kids got a little bit older and we kind of dove into Waldorf inspired work, 
we had these types of main lesson books. You can get these a lot of different places. And I will have these all linked in my guide. And there's different styles. Um, just kind of depends on what you want. If you want to go this route, this was what we were doing at the time. Um, so here is my son's volume one here. This set is from A Child's Dream and they have onion skin pages between like really thin paper to prevent uh, rubbing off. And so we did a boat unit study. So here are his drawings and then I'm labeling them. So that's a cruise ship, aircraft carrier, ferry. Just gonna kind of flip through these quickly. So each couple days we did a different boat when we were doing the unit study. He loved drawing boats, so this was like something he really got into. If your kid isn't into this kind of thing, you know, don't necessarily push it or find a way that they can do some notebooking in a way that they like. Maybe that's just a coloring page. Maybe it's an Art Hub Kids video and they put in part of it. Maybe you take pictures of a hands-on activity you did and you paste those on. We also were doing a lot of um, You Are an Artist chalk pastel videos and so chalk pastels rub off like crazy. So I taped them off, like laminated them, them essentially, and then pasted those in here. So some different boat videos he did from Chalk Pastel. Then we moved into Inventions, Ford Motor, Safety Bicycle, Ferris Wheel, just all different things in here. Okay, so at the same time, my daughter had her own book. She was four, three and a half maybe. And she wanted to be like her brother, so we went for it, okay? Loved her cruise ship drawings. Here's her cruise ship drawing. She would label it, and then I think she got stuck on drawing cruise ships for like a really long time. So each day my son was doing a different boat, and here she was doing a cruise ship. And, you know, fine, cool. So we have the Disney cruise ship, and we have this cruise ship. We have her watercolor painting. And then fast forward a while, we started branches of government and we have another I think this is the Lincoln Memorial actually I wish I had labeled that at the time because then we forget okay sometimes she was drawing on the onion paper hey this is a waterfall in the dragon's cave upside down princesses so it doesn't have to be you know a perfect tape drawing we started here and then we picked up kind of to here and we're doing a little bit concurrently. So like when we were doing a unit study, it went in here. And if it wasn't related to the unit study, it was kind of back to here. This was like our catch all. Um, so then we did a castle unit study. You drawing the castles, doing a little bit of copy work. Different people who lived in the castle, a suit of armor. So when I was talking about connecting back to old learning, right? So we had done a castle unit study a couple years back. And then when we were learning about the Middle Ages, we pulled these out and looked at them and tried to jog our memory of what we knew before we dove into the new material. Um, had read a dragon story. And so that came in here. Different types of swords. Um, here are some siege engines and a type up of his narration about siege engines. This is a joust. A joust is when a knight knocks another knight off his horse, okay? Invented spelling. Does this have to be spelled correctly? No. We want to be balancing the different types of writing. So encouraging original writing and invented spelling is a great approach, especially for young children, and not necessarily correcting it. We can also incorporate in copy work on other days. We can incorporate in narration on other days, it's kind of balancing out the different types of writing activities that we're doing. Okay, Robin Hood stole from the rich and gave to the poor. Here is an example of copy work, except we got two O's in there. The sword and the stone. And that was the end of this one. And then I think we probably just either stopped that unit study or he wanted to do a different one for his unit study at that time. Then we, let's see, did a unit study on architecture. And so he wanted, at this time, I think he wanted one book per unit study. So we started architecture, which he is really into. And he worked on these drawings so hard for like several days in a row. Um, so here's the Burj Khalifa and his writing about that. Then we had the Jeddah Tower. 
a, the Taipei 101 and his own kind of building idea. Dubai Creek Tower, the Shanghai Tower, the Seattle Space Needle. So these worked well for skys um, skyscrapers because they were huge. Then we kind of jumped back in time a little bit for architecture. We have pyramids and the Pantheon. And then we jumped forward again with Falling Water, Frank Lloyd Wright. So um, he transcri I transcribed this for him. He drew the drawing, Zaya Hadid, Zaha Hadid and the, the BIA headquarters. Uh, Phil Freelon's architecture with the National Museum of African American History and Culture, a drawing that he did not want to color, and that was the end of that one. And then what we have transitioned into, as the kids have gotten older and as our needs have changed and as I've kind of changed my own style. So then we, you know, started transitioning into these learning journals and the School Nest Notebooks. So we did not start with an entire collection of School Nest Notebooks, and she didn't even have all of them, you know, when she first started Megan over at School Nest. I will link her below. So we had these for our content area work, once a week, fancy work. Then we had, starting in first grade, kind of a stack of notebooks. So for first grade, when we first started, we had the first grade notebook, the copy work notebook. Then, about halfway through first grade, I think Megan released the science notebook and the history notebook, or I decided that we were gonna separate them, one or the two, because you can see, as I go through this one, that we have all the content in here initially, and then it kinda changes. So now, how I use these is different than I started. So when I started, it was first grade, everything went into first grade. Now we've transitioned over where first grade or second grade or third grade or whatever is like the language arts catch-all and then everything else goes into its own content notebook. So for first grade I started off with these different graphic organizers posted in here hoping we would reference them. We did a little bit but not as much as I thought. Um, and then I was doing a nursery rhyme unit with my daughter and my son wanted to draw the pictures to go to so I let him and we did. Um, this was some filling in the blanks, some just general writing with invented spelling. I'm just going to kind of flip through here, okay? This is going to be a long video, so feel free to, you know, skip ahead or put this on double speed. Uh, Paleolithic times, we are doing history quest, ancient times, pulling in some of the writing revolution, pulling in some writing revolution strategies from the old free version. I will um, link this for you. So sentence or fragments. Um, this was a dictation sentence I gave him. Autumn, the Neolithic era. I'm working on some brainstorming. I wrote this. I wrote this. He drew that. Topic, Red Panda. He was thinking about doing a video on Red Pandas, and so I was writing down his ideas, and then we, like, he helped me label them. This is like him talking and me doing the writing. This is his writing over here. Nope, that's my writing. Here's his writing over here. Another um, dictation, graphic organizer, a keyword outline pasted in from IEW, some because but so work, a TWR, the writing revolution strategy, some more sentence level work, some copy work from History Quest, three part sentences, writing revolution strategy. So I wrote a mixed up thing and he put it in the right order. I wrote it mixed up, he put it in the right order. A keyword outline following IEW work, another dictation, Sumerian work in here, grammar work. Um, Japan, we were learning about ancient Japan. Japanese flag, welcome to Japan, keyword outline. Okay, Earth's four spheres. So remember we saw that drawing of the Earth's four spheres in the learning journal. That was like the final thing. This is some of the work we were doing throughout the week along with that. So, you know, here's the map or this was from RSO, I think. So pasting that in here, some different 
writing together. So Biosphere and then he wrote Is Living Things. I wrote Geosphere. I had kind of that part down and he finished it. Ancient Egypt work in here. Science work. More Ancient Egypt keyword outlines. Oops, pulling that pasting off. Nazca lines. Olympus Mons tectonic plates. So this was kind of where like the more rough type work is going, the outlines, the brainstorming, all of that. And then the final work was going in the learning journal at the end. Okay, lots of keyword outlines in here. This is my model of how a sedimentary rock has layers. Some book reviews, a letter to Amy. What are some great things about growing up? So Peter's chair. This is a picture that I copied from um, Pickwits and he wrote this to go with it. Uh, pet show, book, kind of recording, learning to ski with Mr. McGee, um, use an ellipse. This must have been when we were learning about Apollo 11. And again, you saw that formal piece over in the learning journal. Okay, plot arc in here, just all different work. And we didn't finish the journal, we just stopped at the end of that year. So then about halfway through that is when I got the School Nest Science and History. Now the way we use the School Nest Notebooks is I have a color for each of the kind of more content specific books. So this yellowy marigold color is for history. My daughter will be getting her first history notebook this year starting first grade. Red is science. And then my kids each have a couple different washi color tapes that they have picked out. And so I think this is my son's now. I don't know where this one came from. Um, so all their notebooks have this going around the top so that they know it's theirs. So history, this is the same notebook we have used for two and a half years now. We're just going until it's done. Um, ancient Rome, ancient Greece in here, Roman numerals, end of an era, main idea and details. Here's more of that Roman God work. Um, I showed you the final Roman God drawing and how he had written it up. Here's the rough work where we were editing it and everything. China's Great Rivers, a IEW piece, um, some vocab work, questions, cut, pasted, and he answered. Sometimes I am pasting in stuff from like Evan Moore or wherever, read works, and we're working on reading it and marking it up. Now you can see he's starting to do some of the brainstorm work himself. Here's an example of sharing the pen with a, key, a keyword outline. This is another IEW strategy. Again, he wrote the first line, I wrote the next line. He did the next back and forth, taking turns. Okay, putting in some pictures, doing some more TWR work here, who, what, when, where, why, and then you summarize it and put it all together. And then Middle Ages. Okay, again, we have a lot more reading posted in here because now we're really starting to work on learning from our reading. Because but so work. Here's some ReadWorks articles. And then he read it, we marked it, then we did the keyword outline over here. Started working on some post-it notes. This was a post-it thing where we went back and forth with the writing. Mine was pink, his was blue. And then we put it together and he either typed this one up or hand wrote it, I can't remember. Um, some little interactive things, completing the sentences. This was from a, D, a DK find out book. I just copied the pages. It was like a myth versus truth and you were supposed to like match the lines and so I had it as a matching activity for him. Vocabulary matching, vocabulary fill in the blank that we didn't do. Main idea and details, two column notes here, more reading, um, more post-it work. Okay, started using some write by number strategies here. Um, two plus Hawking, and then that's where we left off with this history notebook. And then science, and we'll pick right back up with that notebook this year. Um, pasting in our lab work for RSO. This one has a lot of ones where I thought we were going to do it and then we didn't do it, so that's fine. That's life, right? This is a model of the sky and why it's blue, Earth's atmosphere, cutting up studies weekly, vocabulary work, um, 
more taking turns with post-its about life and space. This was done over like a week. I remember we were taking turns um, and like he would do one and I would do the other. More pasting stuff in, vocabulary, answering questions, pasting it in, keyword outlines, something we didn't get to. And then life science, which we didn't even actually really finish last year, but here we go. Pasting things in, doing some of the activities, asking a question on a post-it so he can answer it and then draw it up there. Then we decided to do skyscrapers some more. <laughs> Pulled out a Nomad Press Exploring the World on Skyscrapers book. Working on summarizing. Sorry, I'm like flying through this, but otherwise we're going to be here forever. Um, some experiments from the Nomad Press book. More about Fosler, Roman Khan. More vocabulary work. Some Venn diagram work. Engineer design process. More vocabulary work. And then that's that. And again, we're going to pick up where we finished for that. So this year, my daughter just finished her kindergarten year and we're still putting stuff in here. And basically, I'm just pasting in so many things in here. It's like a language arts catch-all. And not even just language arts because she did not have a science or a social studies history notebook for kindergarten. We're just starting those in first grade, family decision. We were doing Aesop fables. And so each week they would illustrate it and I would write down the moral, what they told me. Um, here's some life science work we did. Here is retelling a story from Little Round Schoolhouse. Here is some dictation work. We started a Waldorfy thing in here. Then I moved it over to a math book. So one son, two, and then we switched over to a different book for that. Some sorting animals. We have retell a story from Pinwheels. I'm pasting the cards in. She's pasting the cards in here. Some science work. Here's another fable. Tell a story from Pinwheels. Um, animals in China. Some vocabulary work. So you can see this is all just thrown together in here. Some book summaries. Some writing. Uh, using the sentences from our reading program and doing some cut up sentences. So I cut them up, move them around. She has to read each word and figure out the order it goes in. And then initially she was drawing a picture and then she just wanted to get it done faster. So instead of doing the pictures, she just started um, doing a couple words at a time. Here's some original writing over here. Retelling Winnie the Pooh that we read. Some sorting from Words Their Way sticker work. I'm trying to find an example of when we just started doing. Oh, um, well this isn't sentence work, what I was talking about. This is different. So with our word list, we would take turns. I would read a word and then she would write a sentence using that word. In this case, uh, the first one I think she picked, I forget which word was the one that picked, 10 maybe. Um, and I wrote a sentence for it and then I caught a fish in a net. So that was her sentence, and then I did one, and kind of back and forth there. An example of if she's, you know, hasn't learned the word the yet, and she's writing it over and over again, I'll just stick it on the post-it. Here's some shared writing. Once upon a time, there was a little puppy. He heard a sound. It was a kitty. He started to run after the kitty, blah, 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 blah. But like taking, literally sharing the pencil. Like I'm doing a turn, she's doing a turn. I'm doing a turn and I get to a word she can write, she's doing a turn. Okay, here's an example of when she was like, I'm not doing those illustrations anymore. I just want to get it over with. This would be from like three days. So initially we started with like two sentences and I would color each sentence a different color before I cut it up so that they didn't get mixed up. And then we just kind of finished off that sentence sheet on one page. So it's really all that kind of work just over and over and over again in here. And so this notebook we're actually still working in the summer because we're using all about reading for review. And so I'm just pasting those in here. And sometimes in the back she just starts doing her own thing. All right. Last but not least, the School Nest Reading Journal. We have not used these as much as I have wanted to. I am still hanging on to them though because I don't, I don't know, I really want to use them. Um, so initially we were kind of doing a book review a week. Sometimes we didn't finish it. 
then we kind of paused for a while then we picked that back up again and the books that we were reading together during our reading lessons this is my son's um we would kind of take turns with who was doing the different parts of this so like he filled in this part he told me what to write for these two and for this one he wrote this one he did the illustration and then you'll notice that I kind of start expanding how much he's doing for these to the point where he's doing all of it for some of them sometimes we don't finish it but I hope to continue with these so that is a flip through of all of our different notebooks and kind of a walking you through visually what they have looked like I know this can seem really overwhelming and that's why I have been working on a guide for you. So if you are really wanting to know how to do this, like more laid out and like kind of step by steps or like different things to think about, frequently asked questions, a sample schedule of what that might look like for multiple age groups, check out my guide that will be coming out very soon and then I will link it below when I have that ready. Thank you so much for sticking with me. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment box and I will get back to you. you can also find me on Instagram, homespun.childhood, and I will see you around.